Welcome viewers to Ageless Interviews, where we talk to everyday people doing extraordinary things. Hats off to our guest today. Let's go. Today, I'm glad to introduce to you Peggy Jager, who has written a vela called The Jane Austen Murders. The Jane Austen Murders is a vela you can read on Amazon.com or download to your Kindle. A vela is a series of episodes released over time that unfold into a story. I've read five episodes of the story so far. Good evening, Peggy. Thank you for taking the time to talk with us about your work. Oh, I'm thrilled to be here. Excellent. Can you walk us through the Jane Austen murders and share with us what this story is about? Okay, so first it's a murder mystery. It's a police procedural, and it's a take on every character that's ever been in Jane Austen. Um, I'm a real, you know, Janeophile, and I think I've read Pride and Prejudice every year at least once since I was about 17. Um, there are parts of it I can actually recite without even thinking about it. When I come to it, I just skim them over because I know what it says. Um, so I wanted to do something that was a little strange and take every character in every Jane Austen book and put them together and see what would happen. And it just so happens that Lizzie Bennet um, became my chief detective. She is the junior detective in a detective team in um, the city of Longbourn. And her and her partner, Frank Churchill, you recognize that name from a different Boston book, um, are investigating the murder of a Longbourn College senior by the name of Charlotte Lucas, who happens to make an appearance in Pride and Prejudice. So the entire story is how the two of them um, work through the, the murder and find out the backstory for Charlotte, what she was into, it's a bad story. And um, you see uh, Charles Bingley is the dean of the English department. Dr. Fitzwilliam Darcy is one of the, the um, PhD teachers who formed an attachment to Lizzie and who was also the chief suspect in the murder. So then the, the book just then, you know revolves around that. Excellent. Yeah, it's, it did look like Lizzie was the main character, short for Elizabeth. Uh, is. Is, there, is there more about her character that's similar, or is she completely different than the Jane Austen Elizabeth? Well, if you took, uh, my thought is when you read Pride and Prejudice, the original version, Elizabeth Bennet is really a feminist. She's truthfully one of the first feminists in, in literature that I think you can look back on. She believes, you know, you, sh you should marry for love. You shouldn't be forced to marry. She believes in women having an equal say in the marriage. She believes in women speaking their mind. She believes in earning respect. She gives respect when she earns respect. Um, that's, you know, she truthfully fights for her voice in that book. So to make her a junior detective, I wanted to give Lizzie that feminist voice as well. So that's where the two of them are extremely similar. Also, if you read further into the book, the Bennett family makes an appearance um, at dinner one night, and they're just like the Bennetts in the book. The mother is a pain in the neck. One of the sisters has a child out of wedlock, and guess which one that is, Lydia. Um, one of them plays the piano. One of them is, you know, a social worker who only does good. So I took all of their characters and modernized them. There's even a Mr. Collins in the book, and he's a bit of a prick. So <laughs> it was really fun to write. And their uh, her partner is Frank. Frank Churchill. He's not in Pride and Prejudice. I think, um, I'm trying to remember which one he's in, Sense and Sensibility, I think. All so right. like I said, you took every character in every book from that Austin wrote that I could remember off the top of my head and put them in here and gave them modern character, modern characterizations. Excellent. And how are you inspired to write a twist on Jane Austen with the murder mystery? Well, I'm a romance writer by trade. I write romance books, like novellas, books. Um, but before I ever wrote a line of romance, I wrote short stories and novellas um, on murder mysteries. I was, you know, I think Netflix was invented for me because I was one of those original murder mystery mavens. I loved serial killers. I loved getting into the mind of a serial killer. I'm a registered nurse and my background is in psychiatric nursing. So I always was interested in the motivation behind behavior. I still am. Um, so I used to love to read about serial killers. I think I have every book that was ever written about Manson and John Wayne Gacy. And I, you know, I've used them for characterizations over the years. So um, writing murder mysteries is what I did for a living before I ever wrote a word of romance. So I wrote the Jane Austen murders as a, as a writing exercise to see if I could modernize it. And I put it into a murder mystery. And I, you know, I gave all the characters, serial killers, um, characteristics and, you know, bad guy characteristics and villains. So that's how it came about. And then I liked it. I liked what I wrote, but it was kind of long to put in a book. 
I mean, I think it comes out at over 500 pages. I printed it out once off Vela, and it came out to 500 pages. That's a lot to ask somebody to pay for a book. So it was a lot easier to pare it down and put it in chapter versions on uh, Vela. It's a lot easier, actually. Sure. And who is your favorite character in this story? Well, I'd have to say Lizzie, because like I said, I, she really is, in my mind, the first feminist in literature, and I loved writing her. So, you know, I could I could take many of her characteristics and put them into a lot of heroines, but knowing that that's the core value system that she has, I really do believe she's a feminist, um, it made it just so much easier to write, and she's just a pleasure. I love I loved getting into her mind, especially when the not romance, but when the attraction between her and Darcy becomes evident, she is so conflicted because he's a murder suspect and she shouldn't be having any kind of a feeling except arresting this man. Um, she shouldn't be having anything other than that. And she's so conflicted by what she does feel. And I thought that was pretty cool to, to delve into psychologically. Sure. And do you have a favorite quote or excerpt from the Jane Austen murders that you can share with us? Well, my favorite episode if you read the Vela um version is episode 31 and in that version Darcy calls Lizzie and asks her to meet him outside of the police station no lawyers no other police officers he just needs to try to plead his innocence so she goes thinking that she's going to catch him in a lie or she's going to catch something for him but if you remember in the original Pride and Prejudice book, there are many instances where Darcy comments about Elizabeth's eyes, how they're a beautiful color, how, you know, they can, he, he thinks that she, she can see into his soul. So in this episode, in episode 31, I, I tell through, I, I make Darcy tell Elizabeth that what he feels about her, he sees everything in her eyes. He knows that she's conflicted about his guilt. He knows that, you know, she wouldn't have met him if she wasn't having doubts. And she's very skeptical. And that, that entire scene was so much fun to write because I really took a lot of the original dialogue and tried to interpret it in, an, uh, in a contemporary sense. So that's episode 31, if you read on. <laughs> Excellent, sure. And you do have quite a library of books and bellas. Uh, can I you do. tell us how many books and bellas you have and what genres um, they're in? As of today, I think I have 41 books on Amazon and then KU and all the other places, Kobo, whatever. And I had six vellas. Um, I was, you know, we were discussing before, I was one of the original participants in Vela. Um, it was instituted in June of 2021. I came on board July 1st of 2021, and that's when the Jane Austen murders went up. Um, so I've been around for a long time. So I've had six up and I've actually taken one down and um, put it into print. That's this one. It was a collection of short stories called Death Between the Pages. And it's all short stories that I had written about death, fictionalized death. Um, there's murder mysteries in here. Um, yeah, it says a cheating husband, a group of widows, a priest, a landlady, a spider. What do they all have in common? Death. So all of these stories deal with those those things. So that was pretty cool to take the villa and put it into print. Um, but as of right now, I think I have four active ones on Vela. One children's story, one romance, and two murder mysteries. Great. That's quite <laughs> uh, a library. Uh, who, are, uh, who are your favorite authors and what did you like about them? Well, I'm a romance writer, so my absolute favorite author is Nora Roberts and her doppelganger, J.D. Robb. J.D. Robb, if you don't know, is Nora Roberts, but she writes a futuristic police procedural series called the In-Depth Series. So she's my favorite. Um, my other favorite authors are mostly romance writers. You may know them, you may not know them, but they're all, you know, in that genre. And the reason they're my favorites is because romance for me is just the end all be all. I think everybody deserves a happily ever after. And because of that, I like reading stories about that, even though I like murder mysteries and serial killers, too. I'm like a little schizophrenic when it comes to that. It's good to have diversity, for sure. Yeah, I agree. Who would you say are the friends and family who have supported you in your writing projects? Well, I've been married for 35 years to my own hero. Um, so he kind of supports me financially and emotionally. Um, my daughter was my very first reader when I started writing murder mysteries, believe it or not. And if something made her a little squeamish, I know I was on the right 
my right track. Um, and I have a lot of friends. Most of my, my regular friends aren't what I call big readers, um, but I have a ton of writer friends. And if you know anything about writers, what you do, we're readers first. Yeah. We love to read new people. We love to find new ways to tell a story. And we absolutely adore when we find a reader that's a writer that speaks to us. Absolutely. Do you have any other hobbies besides writing? Um, well, I have weird ones. Um, I like to decoupage old steamer trunks. I've done about six now, and I give them as gifts, uh, and I use them as well. I have a couple in my, my office here um, for storage. Um, that came about really, it was a strange thing. I, I saw a beautiful old open-topped Portman 2 at a... Um, a Salvation Army store one day. And it really, it's just, it's one of those pieces that spoke to me. I said, that's a really cool thing. I wonder what it would look like if I fixed it up. So I started decoupaging it with pictures I cut out of magazines. I loved it so much. And I got so many compliments on it. I started giving them as gifts. I've given about four of them for wedding gifts. I did one as a baby shower gift. And I have, like I said, I have three of my own. So it's a strange hobby, but it's very common. You know, all that gluing and cutting and drying, it's really pretty cool. Great. Any favorite places that you visited? Um, well, before COVID hit and we became hermits, uh, my husband and I and my daughter, we used to travel a lot. We traveled when she was looking for schools, for colleges. And my two favorite places on earth, I'm going to have to tell you, are Ireland and England. The people in both of those places, I've never met such welcoming and wonderful people. They love to talk. They love to read. Two of my favorite things, the people and and just the history, the history and the beauty of Ireland and the history of England are just wonderful. Absolutely. I want to go back soon, too. I, I'd like to have set a book in, I don't know, a murder mystery, maybe in England somewhere. Sure. Maybe in the Botlian Library over at uh, Cambridge. <laughs> I seem to remember a certain famous detective having come from England. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you happen to have any pets? I do. I have a three, almost three-year-old chocolate lab named Maple, Maple Leaf, because I live in New Hampshire, so okay. her name has to be Maple. Um, she is almost three years old, but she still thinks, and she's 100 pounds, but she thinks she's three months old and a lap dog. And so she is just, she's too much. She's the love of my life and the bane of my existence, if you know what I mean. Sure. If you have a dog, if you have a puppy, you definitely know what I mean. Excellent. <laughs> With your extensive library, do you have any advice for people who are looking to perhaps build their own library? We could do, you know, a master class on how much advice I could give because of all the advice I've gotten over the years. But right. the most important thing, the two most important things I've always thought for myself is write what you love, what speaks to you, what speaks to your heart, and don't write to market. You know, people that have tried to write to market, I, you know, there are some that can do it. They can whip out a book, you know, if vampires are, are hot right now, they can write a vampire book. If, um, you know, murder mysteries are good, they can try to get a good one out. But if that's not what really speaks to you and it's not what you love doing, then I don't know why you would waste your time on it. The other thing that's important to me is don't give away your stuff for free. Hmm. And there are, you know, there's a very wise woman who once told me it takes months to write a book and it does most people it takes months um why would she if you go to work every day you don't expect to go to work and not get paid for the work that you do if you're investing months sometimes years in writing a book why are you giving it away for free your 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 work is worth much more than that so those three things sounds like good advice as a synopsis of advice sure <laughs> thank you peggy jager for sharing your time and insight with us today for our cherished viewers, we hope you pick up The Jane Austen Murders, Fella. It's on Amazon.com or Kindle to read the first three episodes for free, and then it's just pennies thereafter. You can also support your favorite authors by clicking on their follow button on their author page. Leave ratings, leave a review, because a review is like gold. There's a crown button to vote for your weekly Vela favorite. Give them a thumbs up, just as you can click the like button for this video and subscribe. Until next time, blessings be.